Hey, everybody. Rex Bear Leak Project. How the heck are you? I just got back from a nice mini tour around the Archuleta Mesa, at least on the South Colorado side. And with the help of my Nikon P1000, hopefully these guys are going to give me a sponsorship soon. At least send me some free equipment because I haven't even got a discount. But anyway, this thing was a thousand bucks. Well worth it. And I put it to use tonight when I went out close to the Dulce, New Mexico, Archuleta I was about to say Archuleta base, but I didn't get any pictures of the base. I did get some excellent footage of the antenna array at the top of the mesa. And I just want to share with you the experience that I had. Kristen and I, when we went out there and we got to the mesa, we both saw a UFO. Now, the first thing that came into our minds at first was, is it some type of airplane? Because you could see the glittering from the sunlight reflecting off of the craft. So that also made me think it wasn't a bird, Kristen as well. And as I get my camera to take a picture, it's gone. So most air airplanes or craft move in a fluid fashion. You know, I mean, even if they're slowing down, they're still moving steadily. And this thing was, it was just kind of hanging out, maybe moving a little bit. And then within a matter of seconds, it was gone. And we both saw it. We both saw the same thing. And then we both didn't see the same thing. So how ironic is it that it was right above the mesa where there's that fascinating antenna array that a lot of people have speculated it's connected to an underground network and systems out there. Now, I can't confirm that, nor can I deny it because I don't know. I think that they're more li most likely just communications towers, etc. But there could be some antenna systems set up there that are connected to a network of underground catacombs, tunnels, etc. I really don't know. The energy out there is fascinating. And there might be, because I also got some pictures of, some very interesting pictures of what look like wall systems that are tens of thousands of years old on the way there in Southern Colorado. And I got pictures and it looks like almost two different columns of giant blocks that you would think of as, you know, like bricks, but they're giant blocks. And then one area almost looks like it got infused, like there was something that happened and over time and, and weathering it, it kind of infused it. Really fascinating. And I'll, and I'll show you pictures of that as well. So, but the UFO thing, that was bizarre. That was extremely bizarre. And on the way back, we saw a black bear and I got within 10 feet of it. We were talking to each other. We're basically family. So, um, yeah, I got pictures of that, too. I'll, I'll share, you the, uh, share with you the pictures. I do also want to let you know real quick about an, an awesome opportunity. If, if you're somebody that deals with chronic pain, uh, if you're into sports, if you're an athlete and you get back pain, neck pain, muscle pain, headaches, there are so many different types of opportunities that people deal with nowadays. And a lot of people don't want to have to self-medicate or use pharmaceutical drugs or you know, things with side effects, you know, a lot of pharmaceutical drugs. If you, if you read through the side effects, oftentimes you're like, geez, I'll just deal with the pain. At least I'm that way. You need to check this out. This is called denospainreliefstore.com. Now you've heard of Tesla, Tesla technologies. You've heard of these frequency type technologies. This is incredible. This was actually designed and invented in the seventies by the Russians and they designed it. Their space program designed it for their cosmonauts. So they didn't have to take drugs. And then it was used in the Olympics. The Russians used it in the Olympics. So if, you know, if they had pain therapy that they had to work with, they were using this technology. Now you can get it in the palm of your hand and you get access to professional help and assistance, customer service. If you want to optimize results, this has got over a hundred preset frequencies in here that are designed to deal with certain areas. And there's two dozen health modules. So click the link. Let them know Leak Project sent you. DenosPainReliefStore.com. Get yours. All right. Now, are you ready for the pictures? Here we go. Well, you just look at it. Wow, that's a, a pretty nice crystal clear image from miles away. Now, remember, I'm still in southern Colorado. This is in New Mexico. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was kind of a goofy laugh. I know, but I just think that this is exceptionally fascinating that you can get this now for a thousand bucks this type of imagery from miles away. So you can see the antenna rays and you've got some different setups. I mean, I don't see anything that looks out of the normal though, by any means. You've just got something for, for flight. You know, I would think that when this is lighting up red, 
might be some flight controls. You've got your collection of cell antennas and communication dishes, etc. You can see there's some, looks like some buildings and some facilities out there that are also fenced off, but nothing out of the normal. And I didn't see anything, once again, out of the normal in the Southern Colorado area. Got a nice picture of an airplane flying over. I don't even think these are chemtrails. I think these are just your typical contrails. But I didn't even get a chance to put my camera on a tripod. Just took a couple shots, and that's not even full zoom. Not too shabby, eh? Then here's some more pictures of the Mesa. Now, you've probably seen the infamous picture of the Mesa that shows those three orbs that look like they're either coming in or going out of the Mesa. And I've talked to many locals in Dulce that have said they have seen very similar phenomena from different fields, different, different stores, different parts of the community. Most people have seen something. Now, it was funny because I was out and about the other day with Diamond from, from Oppenheimer Ranch, and we were at a, a mesa close to the Archuleta Mesa, and we thought we were going to be able to see the Archuleta Mesa from that one, and we were off track a little bit, but these people ended up showing up <laughs> minutes after we got there, and they were hunting, or they weren't hunting, but they were tracking down a, a poacher that was hunting on their land, but they got out there quick, and nice people, but when we said, you know, we were talking about the possibility of ET phenomena, the, the lady really clammed up, and she's like, oh, I know everybody out here, and I, I don't know any aliens. Aliens don't exist. I just got back from church. No, she didn't say she just got back from church, but the other stuff she basically said. She's like, oh, I know all people out here, and I don't know any aliens. So she took offense to it. She, she seemed to be offended by the possibility. And, and uh, anyway, so Diamond and I were both just kind of like, huh? And then after the fact, it was interesting, after they took off, we went up a little bit further in that area and got some more footage. And then I saw this, this guy on a four-wheeler. It looked like he had a, a bow on his back in some camo. And he, and he drove past us, and I think that was the guy that these people were looking for. But anyway, that's a, you know, none of my business. But let's take a look at some more of these pictures here, because I think it's just fascinating, the area. I also wanted to show you this. Look at all these dead trees on the top. This is weird. I don't know if there was a, a fire out there. I mean, it kind of looks like fire, but they're dead. They're all toast at the top of this mesa. So there's a couple of trees that are still alive here, but most of the trees are dead. What's that about? I mean, I'm thinking if it was a fire, like if it was a controlled burn, then those trees would be gone now. They wouldn't still be standing. They'd clear, it up, they'd clear the area. So what's causing all of those trees to be toast like that? It's kind of weird. Unless we can come down here for a minute. Let's see if we can go to the next picture now. There's another one of the uh, antenna collection. This is the backdrop on the way there. How's that for a view? Would you risk getting abducted by aliens for that view every night? I will. Look at that. Looks like the sun in that picture I showed you earlier that was at the Denver airport at one time. I don't know if it's still there if that, from that piece of art that has the sun in the background and Kind of this was the back of the mesa. This is the back of the mesa. This is just a, a fire tower. So I just want to show you the area as well. If you go around the area, you can see this is the back part of it. This is in southern Colorado right here. Miles away from that when I took the shot. I mean, if somebody was in there, you'd be able to see who was in there with this camera. Now, this is a picture of the moon on the way out. I got a few shots of the moon that I thought were quite exceptional. Doesn't look perfectly round, does it? Especially if you go, I'm sure it might just be the lighting, or maybe there's some, you know, cratering and mountainous areas down there. That was a pretty good shot. Here, let's go to this one here. I'll show you the bear in just a minute. 
And then tomorrow I'm going to talk about the ant people, the petroglyphs of ant people and the remains of what could be ant beans before the cataclysm approximately 11,500 years ago. I mean, this could go back tens of thousands of years. Tens of thousands. Could go back hundreds of thousands of years. Look at that, yeah. There he is. Look at him. Now, when I, when I drove past him, he was at the very bottom of the tree. He was just chilling out. So, so st I stopped Frankenstein, and my goodness, I need to get a new vehicle because this 24-year-old van, every time I put money into it, it's like, okay, here's another opportunity. Okay, here's, now I got to put $500 more into it. It's like practically every part on it's been replaced. And they're like, oh, wait, no, here's another part you got to replace. Anyway, I'm just saying. And the brakes still suck, even though they're new brakes. Because there are disc brakes on the front and there are drum brakes on the back. So <laughs> we're like, oh, you know, you hit the brakes and he's like, ah, 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 ah. anyway, the brakes are okay. You just be much better in a modern vehicle. But I'm digressing, I'm divagating. So check this out. I mean, so we back up and then he starts running up the tree. But when, when I first saw him, he was at the very bottom. And I got within 10 feet of this guy. He was just, he was totally cool, totally chill. He was, a, he was a nice bear. Got some video footage, but it's kind of dark. So, the zooming in, it didn't really seem to... I don't know. Let's see what the best shot is right there. That's a pretty good shot. So, I'm going to have to look up the animal totem of a black bear. Black bears, almost full moons, UFOs. All in one night. And, of course the art of Mesa. How about that? Stay tuned. Look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. I, oh yeah. Let me, before, before we close out, I got to let you know, I've got a ton of awesome guests coming up. Now, many of these guests are going to be at Disclosure Con, October 5th and 6th. Make sure to be there in Pine Top, Arizona. You need to be there. It's going to be amazing. So I'm going to be there. And let me give you a quick rundown on some of the guests that I've got booked over the next several days. So this is over the next several days here. We've got tomorrow, I've got Bob Kudla from Trade Genius Academy. And Bob is a trade genius. He's been trading cryptos for years. I mean, since Bitcoin, pretty much near inception. He eats, drinks, sleeps, and works out trading cryptos. I mean, this guy is incredible. So if you want to know about the trends, check it out tomorrow. That's going to be at, I think, let me double check on this. It's going to be at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Yeah, it's going to be at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Also, who else do I have coming up here? Global Witness. Derek from Global Witness at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Derek is incredible. He's very intelligent, and he has been with different groups of very high rollers for many years of his life. And, and now he is sharing information with the world on his YouTube channel. Global Witness. His name's Derek. And he had some involvement with the film Outbreak. We're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about these pandemic possibilities and these quarantines at airports and airplanes and how quick a outbreak scenario could actually travel the world and the possible consequences and the ways that we can offset those possible monstrosities and nightmares. Also, on the 25th, ladies and gentlemen, on the 25th, Brooks Agnew, 1 p.m. Brooks Agnew, 1 p.m. The Hollow Earth. The Hollow Earth Expeditions. Oh, yeah. So, this guy knows more than just about anybody on the planet when it comes to the expeditions to the center of the Earth. Now, is the center of the Earth what we've been told? Is the center of the earth hollow or are there catacombs around the world that connect and maybe the center of the earth is a crystal type energy versus magma and the magma is outside of that? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to talk to Brooks. And after that, Andrew Basago, this guy is a legend. I've been wanting to interview him for years. He is not only very intelligent and um, a, a very well-spoken he, um, I spoke with him the other day, was doing some very good deeds, and he talks about a program called Project Pegasus with DARPA, and time travel, 
and traveling to Mars. Well, guess what? He's been there. So you want to get in on this, don't you? Oh yeah, I can't wait to hear what Mars is like. Reminds me of Moab. So be there. That interview is going to be at 3 p.m. Mountain Time on the 25th. And then I've got Josh Toms on at 9 p.m. Mountain Time on the 25th. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I've got Joel Christopher Payne. Oh, I can't wait for this. Joel Christopher Payne, September 26th at noon. And then after that, I've got David Loomis on the 26th at 9 p.m. These are all Mountain Times. David Loomis, 9 p.m. I mean, are you serious? This is crazy. I hope that I can get an assistant to like bring me some coffee or something because I'm just going to be in my garage. I've got my, my elliptical set up, my bike set up, my, my weights, and I'm going to have to set up a, you know, a sleeping bag in here because I'm going to be working like crazy, but it's not work when you're having fun. So I'm going to be sharing information with the world, and I hope you can be a part of it. So David Loomis, the 26th. 9 p.m., and then the 27th. Who do we have on the 27th? Tim Cohen. Boom, 1 p.m. Then Mike Barra. What time? 3 p.m. Then Dylan Monroe, 9 p.m. Whoa, are you serious? No, but I'm from Sirius. Then on the 28th, I've got Travis Walton. Travis Walton? Yeah, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. And then on the 28th, I've got Susan Ross, 9 p.m. And I'd like to thank Doc Skinner, for making these interviews possible. Doc Skinner, as busy as he is with 1028 Productions, putting together this Disclosure Con that's coming up here in just a couple of weeks in Pine Top, Arizona, he managed to find the time to schedule these interviews for me. So thank you, Doc. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of this. Definitely you want to check out the opportunities right now at denaspainstore.com. I'm sorry, denaspainreliefstore.com. Get you one of these gadgets. Oh, yeah. Be the change you want to see, and don't forget... Like Bill and Ted, be excellent to each other. Why not?